Okay, elementary statistics, looking at section 11.3, once again, contingency tables. Uh, looking at problem number eight, now I wrote the table right here. Uh, so kind of describing what this is talking about. So it says the U.S. Supreme Court considered a case involving the exam for firefighter lieutenant in the city of New Haven, Connecticut. Results from the exam are shown in the table below. Is there sufficient evidence to support the claim that the results from the test should be thrown out because they are discriminatory? Use a .01 significance level. So we're going to use significance level .01. So we're going very precise on this one um, as we're looking at this. Now do realize that whatever is going on here in this case, basically what they're trying to get towards is that a person probably failed the test because they were that minority and they're saying well the test is discriminatory that it's led to where white candidates are going to pass more than a minority is uh, and so then it went to court systems and went through the process and went all the way up to the Supreme Court uh, so now they're bringing a mathematician to actually test whether the data is showing that it's discriminatory or if there's some other lying cause that could be within here so we're basically comparing the fact that do these columns or the, I'm sorry, do these rows here have some sort of factor on whether you're going to pass or fail within here? So, what are we doing? We're going to be testing uh, towards our null hypothesis. Okay, so once again, our null hypothesis. So if we go back and we look at this, our null hypothesis states that the columns and rows are independent. So rows and columns are independent. So there is no relationship between having this and this. Okay. Our alternative hypothesis talks about that the rows and columns are dependent okay once again that the this right here that whatever row you're in has some sort of influence on whether you're going to be in that pass or fail type situation uh, so now what we need to do is we need to go through we need to calculate this okay so this first one I'm going to show you how we're going to go by hand the next one I'll show you how we'll use a calculator on uh, once again this isn't the worst one to do by hand so if we consider what's happening overall we have our observed matrices Okay, so if I just change colors here and look at our observed matrices. Okay, in our observed matrices, we have 17, 16, 9, and 25. Okay, basically we're taking our column and we're writing it as a matrices. Uh, so it kind of organizes the numbers versus having all the words that go with it. That way we can look directly at what is happening in here. Uh, we got to figure out our expected, okay? So we got to figure out what is our expected one. Um, now, do remember that the expected matrices relies on taking this formula where we're going to take the total number in the row times the total number in the column divided by the grand total, okay? So what we need to do is we need to figure out what is our row total okay so if we take 17 plus uh, 16 that is 33 we take 9 plus 25 that is 34 uh, if we come down here and we go 17 plus 9 is 26 uh, and then we have 41 so basically on this test Okay, if I just let's just extend this, let's just go like this. We had a total of 67 people take this test. Um, out of this, 33 were white, 34 were a minority, um, 41 total failed, 26 total failed, uh, and then this breaks in the ands within here. Uh, but this is once again the total, once again 26 plus 41, 33 plus 34 is at 67. Don't add all of these together uh, because then you'd be doubling up everything. Um, so in here for their first one right here, this one right here, 
we're going to take our row total times our column total and then divide by 67. Um, so that would be 33 times 26. So once again, I'll put my finger here. We'd have 33 times 26 divided by 67. Uh, that gives us 12.8. Okay. Now here we're going to take 33 times 41 divided by 67, and we get 20.2. Here we get 34 times 26 divided by 67. Uh, so this is 13.2. And then this one we're going to take 41 times 34 and then divide by 67. And that is 20.8. Okay, so this is what's expected. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to come, we're going to find our test statistic. Okay. So our test statistic, once again, this is going to be chi-squared, okay? On the chi-squared, what we're going to do is we're going to take the summation of our difference of, difference of the observed minus the expected and then square it and then divide it by the expected. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 17 minus 12.8, we're going to square it and then divide by 12.8. Then we're going to take the next one, 16 minus 20.2 squared, and then divide by 20.2. Plus, we're just going to come down here, being I ran out of room. Uh, we're going to do the 9, so we're going to take 9 minus 13.2 squared, divided by 13.2, plus then 25 minus 20.8, divided by 20.8, oh, squared up here. Uh, so once we do all this, we type it in, we get 4.436, okay? So this is our test statistic that we're now comparing. Uh, what we would need to know now is we, we would need to know our critical value, okay? So our critical value. In order to find that critical value, we would have to go to our table, okay? Now, if we remember back, this is a right tail. Okay, so we're at the right side of this graph, once again a right tail test, uh, and we're testing with a significance level of 0 0.01. Uh, so what we do is, we come here, we look at right tail 0 0.01, um, oh, forgot the degrees of freedom. Okay, um, so if we consider the degrees of freedom, we're going to take the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So that is one times one, which is one. So our degrees of freedom is one. Okay, once again, we have the formula. We're gonna take the number of rows, take one away, so one. Number of columns, take one away, and then multiply that together. That gives us the degrees of freedom. So it's not just one less than our data like it has been in the past, it's a little different. Okay, now they go there. Okay, degrees of freedom. We're on that first row. 0 0.01 significance. We see that we have 6.635. Okay, so 6.635. Okay, so that's a critical value. Uh, so what we see here now is we see that, well, wait. Our test statistic is smaller than our critical value. So that means... Okay, once again, if we think back to that chi-squared, that right tail test that's on here, right here is our 6.635. If we were testing in this right tail, if our test statistic was to the right of this, that means we got some sort of extreme value on here. Um, so that means we're going to reject our null hypothesis, but we're testing at 4.436. Okay, so that's right here. So that means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, because we fail to reject the null hypothesis, do look at what that null hypothesis was saying. It's in, these are independent of each other. Okay. So that means that now um, we can look at our statement that we'll be stating on. So if we go back to that problem 
we look at the fact that it says, is there sufficient evidence to support the claim that the results of the test should be thrown out because they are discriminatory? Okay, so that means our claim was our alternative hypothesis. This is being, it, it's a discrimination issue that if you're white, you're more likely to pass. If you're minority, you're less likely to pass. There's some sort of discrimination going on here. Well, we're showing that, hey, it's actually more independent, that the, this really has no consequence on here uh, towards what's going on. So we would come back and state that there is evidence I'm sorry, there is not evidence to support the claim that the test is discriminatory. M I N A T O R Y. Okay, so once again, because our null hypo or because our alternative hypothesis was our claim, we're going to support it in either a not way or a way. Um, so that's why we're talking about supporting the claim. So there is not evidence to support this claim. Now, do realize, do realize that kind of drawing into the how we can mislead things. If we went back to a 0 0.05 significance, we would be at 3.8. 841 okay 3.841 would be here in which then now we would be rejecting that null hypothesis so this is where studies um, data gets to be extremely confusing because w we could do a test in a different way with a different significance level and that would really change the overall results of what's going on here uh, so the more specific we get, once again, that 0 0.01 significance level, let's talk about that 99% confidence interval, um, is a little bit more defined down than a 95% confidence. Um, so that's probably why they want a little more defined on here to that 0 0.01 significance level. Um, but we can't really put uh, a way into this fully. So this is just us writing those maths. Once again, we're doing everything like we did. This was using our test statistic and the critical value. Um, on the next one I'll show you how we're going to use a calculator. So let's look at number 12. Okay, so on number 12 here it talks about lefties. Um, it says a random sample of 760 subjects. Okay, so if I come back to my table here, let me just find my black marker uh, and extend this out. Uh, we're going to come and we're going to basically have this extended to where we have 760 total subjects. Okay, um, And each is tested for left-handed writing. The results are in the table below. Uh, once again, based on the data from left-handed, um, their sinister history by Ella Flower uh, Costas, Education Resources Information Center, paper 399519. We want to use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that left-handedness is independent. Okay, so we want a significance level 0 0.05 claim left-handed is independent of gender. Okay, so basically we're kind of testing towards the simple fact that it doesn't matter if you're male or female, you're still likely to be left hand as left-handed as you are male, as left-handed as you are female, that males are more likely to be left-handed or females are more likely to be left-handed. Okay, so we want to test this claim. I said we're going to be using our calculator, but re please remember we have to show certain data on here. Um, so we're going to come, we're going to state our null hypothesis. So once again, the null hypothesis, rows and columns are independent. I'm just going to use the capital letters for an abbreviation here. I'm perfectly fine with you guys just using this just to kind of shorten up the data. Uh, if we were formally writing this for an actual test or something, yeah, we'd be writing it out fully, making it be very pretty. Um, the alternative hypothesis, rows and columns are 
dependent then of each other. Okay, so if we think back, our claim is being stated as the null hypothesis. So once again, we're either going to reject our claim or fail to reject our claim as we kind of keep going through this uh, within here. Uh, we want to write out our observed frequency, our observed um, one, and then our expected. Okay, so our observed, go like this, is going to be... 23, 217, 65, 455. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to actually calculate this out. Okay, um, We're going to want our expected matrices yet. Uh, we're going to want to list off our things, uh, but we're going to let the calculator do quite a bit of work for us. So um, what we're going to do is we need to go into our calculator feature. So you could either bring in just a calculator feature down here or go to your calculate up here. It doesn't really matter what you go into. Uh, notice we got other information in here. Now, first things first, we need to define our matrices. Okay, so we need to go menu, actions. Okay, so menu, actions, and then define. Okay. So I'm just going to go like this. Um, let me just grab another sheet of paper right here. So we're going to go menu, actions, define. Okay. Now, once we have that define up on our calculator, notice it says define down here. So right here it says define. I'm just going to go A equals... Okay, and now we're going to type in our matrices. So um, I'm just going to use our script where I'm going to type in my bracket. And then I'm going to type in my matrices. So I need to get back to where my matrices was. I'm going to go 23, 217, semicolon then. Because then I'll go down a row. And then 65, 455 and then hit equals okay and if you notice it says a equals this matrix and then we're done okay so I have define a equals I typed in that matrix now you could have brought in a matrix you could have went to your uh, menu matrices to find a two by two matrix and typed it in that way uh, and then notice big thing is you got to see this done that's on here okay now that we have that done we see that that's done. We can now perform our test. Okay, so our test now is we're going to go menu statistics. Okay, so I can kind of write this out for you once again. Menu statistics uh, stat tests. Okay. And then now what we're going to type or what we're going to select is we're going to select uh, see if I get through, that chi-squared two-way test. Okay, so we're going to then select the chi-squared two-way test and it has a dot 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 on there. Okay, uh, once we select that We select this. Notice it asks us for an observed matrices. Okay, so it asks us for that observed matrices. This is where we hit our over arrow and notice that A pops up that I define that matrices to be. So I have my matrices A that now I bring in and then I hit enter. Okay, and considering what happened here, look at that we get our chi-squared value, we get a p-value, we get our degrees of freedom given. Uh, expected matrices is this right here. Um, so, okay. Uh, so then we have our overall what happens. Now notice it did not give us our expected matrices. Uh, we had some issues on there. Um, I don't know how to fix this. Uh, if we go over into 
one of our lists and spreadsheets uh, run our test over there we can generally bring it in from here uh, but a lot of times it would be easier just calculating it out so uh, we're gonna have to write out our expected frequent our expected matrices yet okay so we have to calculate this out yet uh, but we can be and I ran the test I can come here and I can go my test statistic chi squared equals 1.364 I can go my p-value now is 0.243 okay um, and now I go come back and get my expected uh, once again I'm going to figure out my row total so 23 plus 217 is 240 uh, 65 plus 4 55 is 520. Once again, those adding up to be the 760. Uh, coming down here, 23 plus 65 is 88. And then 672 for this one. Uh, so now for my first one here, for this one, I'm going to take my row total times my column total divided by my overall total. Uh, and we get 27.8. Uh, this one, going to take 240 times. 672 divided by 760, uh, we get 212.2. Uh, just continuing on, we have 60.2 and 459.8. Okay, uh, so some of the things just to be kind of looking at here is as we're kind of considering what expected would be and what, what's observed. We're seeing we're fairly close to what things are, so I mean it's looking fairly decent for how things go. Now we would have like an expected here of 200, and we got 23. That's when red flags become, and that's actually when these p-values over here are test or uh, test statistics would be uh, extreme on here. Uh, now, considering the fact that our significance level is 0 0.05, and we come up with a p-value of 0 0.240, that means our p-value is greater than this so that means we fail to reject the null hypothesis okay so we fail to reject the null hypothesis uh, because we fail to reject that null hypothesis that means we're showing signs in here remember that is siding with our claim uh, so basically we now state and switch colors here. Um, there is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that left handed this is independent of gender okay so nope move that up so you can see that um, so basically overall what it's saying is that whether you're male or female you're just as likely to be left-handed as not so once again that's that common sense overall kind of conclusion on there this is our mathematical conclusion remember um, this is for mathematicians, not normal everyday people when we start phrasing things this way. Um, but th this is basically our two-way test. Now, now, hopefully you're still listening to this because it is vitally important, okay? Vitally important. We have to make sure to delete what you entered in because now anytime you type in the letter A, it's automatically going to be this matrix. For instance, if I go A... It's in black now, right? It's in black. I go A, I hit enter. It pulls a matrix in there. I need to delete this, okay? So I have to go menu, actions, delete variable, and then type in your A and hit enter, okay? So you have to make sure to delete the variable, okay? So once again, menu, actions and then delete variable and then you'll type in your variable hit enter 
uh, and then that's gone because otherwise you're going to have issues as we keep going down the road uh, and you do other problems.